Uh, hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. Today I have Naveen Kumar Kavetri with me. Uh, about Naveen, Naveen has done his studies from ISI uh, Kolkata and he has worked in big companies like uh, Walmart, Intuit, and currently he is working for ASOS and he is based out of London. So, welcome, welcome Naveen to the channel. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you for inviting me for this. Uh, so, yeah, Naveen, uh, first tell us how you got started with data science. So, uh, for me, it's not it's all organical. I mean, I have pursued my master's in statistics from University of Hyderabad. And uh, after that, I pursued my master's in technology from ISI Calcutta. So, all of my studies uh, background are in statistics. So, it's organically, I joined a company after uh, ISI Calcutta. I joined a company called RSG Media which is into media analytics, a uh, media analytics thing. So I have started my career as an operation research analyst. So primarily focusing on optimizing, optimization stuff and uh, other stuff. And then when I joined Walmart, uh, I have started my career into data science. Like even, even when we were working on uh, RSG Media, so me and my friend, one of friend basically used to compete in Kaggle uh, out of interest, like out of... Uh, our free time, basically, we used to compete in uh, open source competitions like Kaggle Analytics with their started that time. I mean, that, that was the first year for them. So we used to come and compete on all of those competitions and uh, learn from those competitions. But when, jo when I joined Walmart, that's where uh, actual data science work I, I started. Got it, got it. And so, Naveen, uh, your background is statistics and operational research is optimization. Uh, how does it help someone uh, when they come to a data science field? And what are the extra skills they need to gain to work in the data science field? Yeah, statistics, I feel, I mean, uh, I look statistics as a uh, pillar for the data science. I mean, uh, whenever I mean, uh, just take any example, right? Take any machine learning model. So machine learning models are basically the fundamentals. Like if you build a, a linear regression model or logistic regression model, so that entire story behind this p-value, p-value and coefficients and the statistics, f statistics and so on, right? So all of this basically built on top of statistics. So I don't think data science and statistics both are separate. So basic data science is built on top of statistics. So it's a pillar for uh, the entire uh, data science field. That's that's all. That's all field. But uh, as we moving forward, like uh, concerning the deep learning models and uh, the LLMs and other stuff. So the phase of statistics is going into the blur. Like, I mean, maybe it's in the math behind this, but uh, as an applications application point of view, we don't much consider about that. Like we just write a couple of lines to train the model, fine tune the models and use the pre-trained models. But there is a lot of math going behind that. And I'm sure statistics must be some of some of uh, some part of those things completely agree and, and uh, so about linear regression everyone fights the economics people they say it's borrowed from them statistics people say they, it's originated from it but machine yeah. learning has borrowed linear regression definitely from statistics and also the logistic yeah. regression yeah yeah and uh, what are the extra skills like you are good with good with statistics optimization but what are the extra skill one needs to learn to work in a data science or machine learning field? Uh, so the primary skills is basically understanding the business uh, problem. That's, I mean, uh, initially when I started my career, I was primarily focusing on uh, the technologies, like learning more and more different models and stuff. Uh, but when we, when you gain the experience, you will realize basically uh, what business stakeholders, what are basically they're interested in. So they want a solution. They don't care about like what exactly you're using, whether you're using a state of the art model or maybe just a linear regression, right? It doesn't matter for them. So understanding a business problem statement and converting that into a machine learning problem is primary skill. So that's where, that's where the majority of the efforts goes into, like how you structure your problem. Very well said. Very well said. We have these uh, uh, models, all our tools, but it's more about understanding the business and how can we frame the problem and solve it with these tools, which are models and coding, whatever. Yes, yes, I agree. Mm. So, uh, Navin, you have worked in a bunch of companies. So, tell us uh, about different domains you have worked upon or just a brief about the type of business problem you have solved. 
So starting with my first company, RSG Media. Uh, so we used to work with uh, uh, channels, TV, TV channels. So TV channels basically our clients, and uh, we used to work with them uh, to uh, allocate uh, assign uh, allocate the ads within the breaks. This is a scheduling problem, standard scheduling problem basically. So given a, a list of ads and given a, a list of breaks with slots, you have to like order each ad within the break. So that's an optimization problem that we have to build. And working with the clients is a wonderful experience in that. I mean, uh, when you are working with someone who is working on the ground level, operational level, right? So they will come up with a different, different type of requirements. Hey, I don't want this, this in order. I, I want this to be up and I want this to be down and so on, right? So those are, uh, those are explained in plain English, but converting that into mathematical equations to put into an optimization framework. So that's a challenging part. Like, I mean, they, we used to basically get the requirements on a weekly basis, two or three, but we took like at, at least two weeks, three weeks to just to convert that into a, a mathematical formulation and put it into a, uh, optimization frameworks. That was a wonderful experience. Uh, working with an uh, operational level people and trying to understand what's their concern and converting that into mathematical equations. And after that, uh, I worked with Walmart for three years. So uh, during the course of Walmart, so basically we directly work with the supply, uh, supply chain team. And uh, there is a stakeholder that sits in US and they also understand uh, what is the data sense that's going behind. And we never work with directly the operational level in the Walmart. So the the transaction between the stakeholder and us was very smooth because we they understand what is a data sense and we know what we are doing. It's easy to explain them, hey, this is what we are planning for and this is what we do. And that's it. Like that was that was a different level of experience. And after that, I worked with Intuit for four years. Uh, in Intuit, the product managers were our stakeholders and uh, the experience is really amazing at Intuit because product managers are always enthusiastic to basically towards AI to put something into the product, which is AI, uh, AI enhanced. So we were basically, uh, so as they are more enthusiastic, basically it, it, uh, it helps us to basically uh, increase uh, our motivation towards to work on those proper problems. So there are like plenty of applications in the input that uh, have worked, uh, which, which are in the product and um, very proud of that, actually. And I recently joined ASO, so still uh, working on uh, one of the project. And here, and here, one year also same thing that I'm experiencing as in the, my first year of my career. So working with the ground level operational people, and we always get a different types of requirements, and uh, we want to like explain them. Hey, this can't be done with the data sense, and this can be done with the data sense, and this is how it differs. So that that is a major difficulty when you're dealing with basically. Uh, different types of stakeholders completely agree been there <laughs> in that those kind of situation uh, yeah. Naveen one follow up question on the first uh, job where uh, you were uh, given the business problem you were uh, formulating the formulating it into a optimization problem what would be the constraints look like in those in that problem just some uh, constraints are very actually though so basically if you uh, talk about uh, the um, television media industry right like there are like uh, three different stakeholders one is the advertiser so there, there is uh, a tv channel tv channel is itself is one uh, uh, one stakeholder and advertisers is an another stakeholder and actually two stakeholders so there are some requirements from the advertisers and there are some requirements from uh, the tv channel like for an example advertisers for maybe um, children product right uh, let's take an example of parleji biscuit right so they don't want to show a parleji biscuit ad uh, in uh, in a program like where only the uh, male and uh, uh, aged male actually watches maybe some some kind of match or something right they don't want to show that kind of ads in that particular that particular programs right so basically there are concept of target audience and there is a concept of reach so they want to reach their target audience. If the product, uh, if the product is uh, about basically the male uh, aged above thirty, so they want to uh, get that particular target audience reach so and so greater than some something. Right? So they have all of these cut off cut off limits based on the forecast and other things. We have to make sure that when we are scheduling an ad, so the target audience reach should be at least so and so. 
got it got it completely got it so it was a advertisement problem with targeted audience so you have to make sure that all the three stakeholders gain out of it um okay. i love such type of problem where you have a machine learning model which gives the prediction on top of it you have to do some optimizations right right that is the most uh, i mean most three i mean uh, regular problems whenever you are dealing with optimization you need some kind of uh, things needs to be estimated mm -hmm. so it's a basically hybrid of a prediction mm -hmm. model and then followed up by the optimization model even the current project which i am working on is also in the similar format mm -hmm. that is your expertise <laughs> yeah uh, navin one question i have re i have read some of your blogs uh, on nlp and vision transformers and also one on recommendation system so this nlp and vision transformer part where did you get to work on it so it was in uh, intuit oh. uh, uh, in intuit basically uh, so uh, uh, invoice in intuit uh, has a, a product called quickbooks online so quickbooks online is basically primarily focusing for small business companies uh, to create their invoices to create this purchase orders and so on so understanding an in invoice uh, digital document is a primary interest for the business like i mean understanding an invoice document can solve multiple problems for an example given a pdf of invoice extracting the fields which one of is basically customer name which one of is the item name and what is the invoice date what is the invoice number and so on right so extracting these fields is a primary of interest like and this can be used in multiple places so when we are onboarding uh, new customers to the uh, intuit and also when we are uh, already onboarded customers both of them actually get benefited with this uh, this this kind of document understanding problems so that's where we actually applied this document understanding problem got it got it uh, so since you have worked on vision transformer and lp1 question navin that uh, attention is all you need is was the ground breaking paper which introduced the world uh, transformer architecture and also self attention which has changed uh, everything nowadays all these uh, uh, llms are based out of it but very few people know about the vision transformer right so mm -hmm. tell us about the vision transformer how it works just a brief about it as maybe i am not the right person for that sorry if i mean i haven't worked much on the vision transformers the one that i have used is basically uh, the layout lm uh, for the document understandings so maybe on a high level uh, so the transformers primarily focusing on the text data right i mean the google come up with this vision transformers basically uh, enhancing the same architecture transformer type of architectures to get more meaningful embeddings for the visions i guess but i'm i'm frankly speaking like i'm not the right person uh, to answer that question but uh, so i can talk about uh, the layout lm kind of things the layout lm doesn't use the vision transforms it it uses uh, the image embeddings and also it uses the text embeddings and combines both both the uh, features basically so how image is actually related to the text so it try to learn learn on the both both the things including including the location related specific things like i mean if a customer name mentioned every time on the top left of the invoice document it tries to understand or lens such kind of location related parameters too so that's where basically uh, using three types of feature like a vision related features when i say vision related feature they are not using vision transformers they are using basically in the layer v1 uh, and v2 i'm talking about they are using uh, already off the shelves uh, image embedding models and uh, there is a text related features and there is a location related features like in, on the document where exactly this particular thing is mentioned so combining three different modalities it tries to learn uh, the embeddings for these things and also in the downstream tasks it try to classify what exactly a field is whether it's an invoice date or invoice number so that's where uh, we used so so navin can you give a bit more details about this uh, multi model uh, architecture which is gaining a lot of popularity these days people want to combine all the modalities together uh, how how it helps and how is it done so in many of the applications right now what happens like uh, so initially deep learning uh, was started with images and then it spread to text and also uh, audio and video and other stuff right so but if you go to the real world applications it's never been it's never been basically one modality we don't learn only with the text we don't learn only with the images right so when we are humans learning we when we are watching a video we are watching the video we are uh, viewing the images in that video and also listening at the same time right so it's a multi modality learning is actually from the human learning perspective right 
so the all of this multi modality is focus on this uh, more than one modality so uh, image and text is most common right when you are trying to understand a particular document or when you are right, trying to read a book or something right so to get more about a text you also uh, need to understand what's inside the image too so uh, such kind of uh, things basically requires a lot of uh, other things like i mean combining different types of features image features and also uh, the text features and sometimes when you're dealing with a video is maybe image features audio features and also uh, text features so it's basically uh, multi modality phase is more important but uh, as per the application point of view i don't think uh, i don't i don't see much of applications in real i mean at this point of time but I, i'm pretty sure in future that will that will be there got it and uh, navin so i was uh, reading something yesterday and it was uh, very interesting also i thought more on it so what i was reading was that nowadays people are using vision language model that some text is given it will produce an image like dal dali to stable diffusion mid journey these are like all the versions of it and uh, also i was reading in news there is one uh, instagram ai model so that page is of a female uh model uh, who is not the actual person but ai generated and uh, mm-hmm. similarly youtube channel also one new uh, youtube channel is there where one of the artists post his photographs and very soon it got uh, millions of subscribers and later he revealed that those are not actual photographs he was generating it through ai so all these mm-hmm. things seems very intriguing that people are doing so much with uh, this ai and vision a uh, transformer and combining vision with language models but on the other hand these these are the positive side but on the negative side if we th- uh, see uh, fake news fake images like it's hard to differentiate between yeah. those ai generated one the and the actual one so and it's bit sarcastic that i feel maybe in future we will make models to differentiate what first we'll make it as good as possible god level ai and then we will make models to differentiate no this is ai <laughs> this is the uh, actual one so so what's your take on this dynamically changing field i i think that's uh, that's uh, one of the biggest uh, drawback of uh, using the technology in a bad way right i mean so i don't i, I don't think there is a standard solution for that i mean as we are doing much better to generate as, as you correctly mentioned right and so we are doing we are putting all of our efforts i mean researchers are putting all of their efforts basically enhancing this quality of this generated images for a different purpose like they are not intending to use this for a, some generating a fake news or something right it's all on our hands i mean we cannot so even if we uh, have this generator which can differentiate between the fake news and uh, uh, the original news so that means basically we are uh, researchers are not doing good and basically generating the <laughs> generating the original images right i mean it's it's a contradicts in itself like yeah. it's up to us basically whoever is using this things it's up to us it should uh, as per the ethics like we should use uh, use it i mean we should not use it uh, use it for any of these things that's i mean yeah. there is no solution as per me uh, as such it's on it's on us to basically use it as responsibly yes yes there comes this responsible ai and ethical ai concept and navin uh, what would be your advice to a uh, person like a fresher who is wanting to start into data science in today's world where there is lot of llms so what would you suggest them how to start yeah i have a simple advice for them i mean uh, the problem with the current uh, field is basically it's changing drastically even uh, for me i mean even for the experienced people it's uh, becomes little difficult to catch up with what's happening outside right i mean every day it's something new is coming so all the big companies are actually in uh, uh, putting a lot of efforts in the research so there are lot of enhancement that happening but i one a simple uh, suggestion for whoever is want to come into this field basically just focus and uh, don't get uh, distracted with a lot of this uh, hype right i mean if they are starting now maybe they should start i am i'm basically bottom to top learner uh, not to, not a top to bottom learner so i suggest the same for them like start the basics start from the basics and uh, try to gain the knowledge and be consistent i mean just don't drop off give up early because of the things and hypes right i mean if you are if you are reading something linear regression tomorrow today right i mean i'm just giving an example 
and at the same day you are uh, hearing something about the llms and also some uh, heavy terminology into your mind and you started reading that and you just get diverted right so maybe take the step step by step and just build the basics and then uh, catch up with what we have and we it's it's always impossible to catch up with the current world so uh, just consistent with what you are learning and just focus on what you are learning uh, even if it is a very simple thing just try to understand it completely and then move forward and then pick up new different technology the new different algorithm or something and try to understand it completely and then move forward and so on. and there are like lot of open source uh, courses that are available today i guess uh, the it's they get help from those courses for sure like of course there also gives audit option for most of the courses so so they get a lot of help from the open source community very rightly said very rightly said and uh, navin when you say basics it would mean classical ml statistics and probability right yeah that's that's what i suggest i mean uh, if you talk about the application percentage where i mean if you consider uh, this entire ml dl and ds framework into different algorithms right so if you and companies that are actually using this applications so the i feel the most more than 70 to 80% of the companies uses the simple simpler algorithms so before going into the deep learning or any of the enhanced models right so state of the art models so i think if if you have a more scope on this side like on the ml side like building classification model or building a regression model then why to think about like right now going into the advanced things so just focus on the only this area ml uh, traditional ml and uh, uh, data science type of uh, things before before uh, diving into the deep learning side of it completely agree i also like whenever someone asks me i give the same suggestions just the only difference compared to the advice i used to give in past and now is that previously i used to say learn coding now i don't say learn lot of coding because it's more about problem solving code to chat gpt bhi kar leta hai you can just ask <laughs> exactly <laughs> tell it what needs to be done it will do it for us so basic coding yeah. is needed but not too much deep coding problem solving is yeah. the main art we need to know how to transform business problem into a uh, into a uh, data science solution and then use these tools ml models and all to solve it right 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 that's i completely agree with that too i mean that's what uh, i was initially was saying like basically how you formulate your problem so mm. that's where the majority effort goes and that should be like that only like i mean if how you formulate your problem if that becomes simpler mm. so then nobody needs you basically i mean uh, they can use any of this llm models to generate the code and in fact mm. the product to like so mm. the expertise goes into like what to do i mean given in a plain english business problem what to do what kind of models actually fit and how how, how do you basically build your pipeline to solve mm. this particular business problem mm. so that's where the uh, major skill goes completely uh, so before we wrap up navin uh, any last message for data track viewers i uh, have been following you from long time actually i mean uh, the statistics in the youtube channel like you were posting the statistics basic statistics stuff right i have been following from that time and yeah it's going very good actually i mean uh, for the viewers side of it like maybe <laughs> i don't have any special comment as such maybe just watch more and learn more <laughs> and yeah maybe for one suggestion for you also like uh, you simplify you have a special skill of basically simplifying the things right i mean simplifying the complex things maybe just focus on adding more such kind of videos like take a concept and simplify that and add it into your channel like for the viewers and for me too gosh <laughs> thanks navin thanks for your time bye thanks abhishek